Huh? Make hay when the sun shines? Okay. Well, that'll work too. All right. Well, I'm going to do that here tonight with something. And I have good reason to do this. Uh, it's amazing to me how confused people are. Um, I also want you again to be able to give an answer uh, to others about some of these things. You know, and man, I tell you, I've preached 14 messages on Hollywood, but I, I, I obviously I have another one here tonight. <laughs> so that's number 15. I think that's probably a record somewhere in this country, but, <laughs> but I don't know. But I'm not doing it to beat any records. I'm doing it because it's the truth. And you say, are you, are you ever going to stop banging that drum? Not really. When new things come up and, and, and new ways to reprove old sins in that sense come up, new, si new sins repackaged or old sins repackaged, you'd take the same old truth and bang the drum again with it, then I'm going to. You know? Um, one of these things tonight it, I, I want to bring you because I really believe that people are deceived. Okay, now here's the thing. I want you to listen to this because I actually I thought about this for a couple days now, and I'm I'm absolutely baffled by it. And here's the premise of what I'm talking about here tonight. I hear people that go to church on Sunday, that pastors that will even stand in pulpits, okay, preachers that will stand in pulpits, but yet they will go home and they will watch wicked things all day long or all night long. They will, they will, they will listen to rick, wicked rock music in movies but preach against rock music. Do you understand what I'm going here? They will, they, will, they will preach against witchcraft and say it's wrong, but then go home and watch a movie that has magic in it. And, and you say, okay, and, and now with this new thing, with Robin Williams' death, Okay, this, this comedian and actor, Robin Williams, and his death. They, there are Christians out there that are lifting this man up. Now listen to me. The man consulted familiar spirits. He's possessed. But there are Christians out there, some of them in ministry, some of them pastors, that are lifting this man up and saying, well, rest in peace. I know you're, la you're making God laugh. Well, I think he might be, but in another way. Exactly. But not the way that they think. And the problem is that I, I, you say, well, what do you think the problem is? I really believe that Hollywood, I really, be, I really believe that TV seduces. It has a seducing spirit that goes along with it. I believe that it seduces people and the only the, the only thing I believe TV is nothing but sorcery and seducing spirits. And the reason I say that is, is because I can give you no other reason why Christians would watch some of the things they would watch, would listen to some of the things they would listen and preach the opposite from a pulpit unless they were seduced by something and didn't realize it. Unless they were deceived. Do you understand what I am I making sense here? I'm going to lay it out for you. But I really believe that it is a problem of being seduced and deceived. And that is that is why that they can accept that so readily. And when you shine the light on it, listen, you tell me why the number one hit sermon on that sermon audio page is Hollywood Satanic Roots. Out of all 350 sermons that are there, why is that one number one? Because not very many people preach on it, that's why. That's why. Not a whole lot of preachers preach on it. Why on, why on uh, Brother Brian Moonen's page, 12,000 hits for, for Hollywood Satanic Roots Part 1? 12,000. Pretty good. Why? Because there's people all over the world that have never heard some of these things, and they're like, wait a minute. I've never thought about that. What in the world have I been doing? The same thing I said when I threw away my movies and I, and I started studying out. I was like, what am I doing? Why in the world would I even watch this stuff? What's wrong? And I hadn't watched it for really, that. I really didn't watch that much. And I hated magic and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I knew that was evil and I stayed away from that magic stuff. I didn't want to mess around with that. I, I knew, but it doesn't matter. It was all wicked. 1 Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. 
How do you like that language? The Spirit speaketh expressly. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1. You, you ought to listen when the Spirit speaketh expressly, don't you think? I think you ought to pay attention. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There's, there's a seducing spirit. It says in these end times, in the latter times, they're going to be given, they're going to be seduced. They're going to take heed. They're going to give heed to seducing spirits. Well, do, you, do you think maybe television and movies and Hollywood and those things, you, you think maybe that that's the way that we're giving heed in, in one way to seducing spirits? That we're allowing ourselves to be seduced when we pump that garbage into our homes, when we put it in front of our children's face? That sorcery is trickery. In Acts chapter 8, verse number 9, the Bible says this, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. What did he use? He bewitched them. He used sorcery. To whom they all gave heed. Look at that. Remember that seducing spirits? It says they gave heed to seducing spirits. From the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Wow. And to him they had regard, because out of a long time he had bewitched them with, this, with sorceries. So you know, they're being bewitched by sorceries, and they, they gave him regard. Revelation chapter 18, verse number 23 says, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for, the, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Sorcery deceives. Well, I wonder if there was any sorcery involved with Robin Williams. Well, we covered a lot in Hollywood Satanic Roots, and I think I might have actually touched on him before, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to talk a little bit about that, talk to you about the sorcery that was involved in that, talk to you about how that has influenced. Let's pray. Father, I need you, Lord Jesus. I pray you'd bless us now. Help us to understand these great truths from your word tonight. Help us understand that folks are being deceived out there. They're seducing spirits out there, and they use things like Hollywood and movies, and even this man. And there's people out there trying to lift up a man that was possessed by devils. Lord, help us to give the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, sorcery means magic or enchantment, witchcraft, divination by the assistance of evil spirits, or the power of commanding evil spirits. Well, I wonder if he did that. We'll have to see. We've talked about a lot of this in Hollywood, Satanic Roots. We went through the history of Hollywood and just how psychologists... We talked about mind control. Um, if you haven't listened to that series, you need to listen to it. You need to be informed. All, each one of those messages are unique in the sense that they hit something different and they deal with something different. And you need to understand, you need to be educated on it. And then when you... You know, and... and uh, <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to even talk about that right now. But uh, all right, um, let me just move on. But uh, tonight, what I want to do is I want to show you how I believe that TV must be sorcery. It must be seducing spirits. I can't explain it any other way. You say, why? Because I can't explain to you how a Christian on one hand could say rock music is bad and preach against it and then watch movies that have it in it and glorify it. I, I don't know. I mean, I mean how, else can you, how else can you explain that? You can't, can you? Unless that they, they don't realize they're seduced. They've been seduced. So why is Hollywood sorcery and seducing spirits? Well, with the recent death of Robin Williams, that, that refer, uh, reaffirmed to me that Hollywood must be sorcery. Here's a man that mocked God. Here's a man that spent his days making people laugh at things God hated. Do you realize that he made people laugh at things that God called an abomination? He, in essence, was a jester for Satan, laughing people right into hell. This man spoke of how he got his ability and what he likened it to. Few people realize the dark spiritual side of acting. I want, to read, I want you to understand this quote here, or listen to this quote here. Few people realize the dark spiritual side of acting, going all the way back to the Greek theater. The best actors in Greek theater 
were believed to be literally possessed by the entities they sought to portray on stage. A lot of people don't know that. I covered that in Hollywood Satanic Roots. Many occultists like Aleister Crowley taught the, that acting and assuming the role of a particular demon was the fastest way to come into contact with a demonic entity. Many actors and actresses have credited their success to possession by spiritual entity. Robin Williams claimed that when acting he became possessed and that in the past they would have burned him as a witch. Openly said this. But Christians will go pay 10 bucks to go watch him in a movie. I mean, it's not, he didn't hide this. This stuff's not hidden. I found it in like seconds, minutes. It's not hidden. You're the internet now, man. You can get any information you want anywhere. And it's not some Baptist preacher that's just lying to you. That's what he said. These are his words. Here is a quote from Robin Williams in his interview with U.S. Weekly. Yeah, literally, it's like possession. All of a sudden you're in, you just get this energy that starts going. But there's also that thing. It is possession. It's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, where you really can become this other force. End quote. <laughs> the mystery is in the motion. What miracle the synapses got him from point A to Z? At once a satirist, a comedian, and a superb actor, this one man's repertoire co company dashes from mass to mass, voice to voice, like a man possessed by comic demons. David Anson wrote in Newsweek in 1986. See, these guys aren't hiding anything. Okay, now, um, would that be the definition of sorcery? Would that be the definition of sorcery? He said that he used... He was possessed, okay, he had things, and he, and he used those things, and sorcery gives that same definition. That is how you, that is, a, that is what a sorcerer is, somebody that is possessed by a devil, somebody that, that practices necromancy and other things like that. He also said comedy can deal with the fear and still not paralyze you or tell you that it's going away. You say, okay, you got certain choices here. You can laugh at them, and then once you've laughed at them and you have expunged the demon, now you can deal with them. That's what I do when I do my act. But you got Christians saying, well, you're making God smile now. Rest in peace. Now you're in heaven. There's no peace for the damned. He said, he goes on to say this, the people I've admired, Jonathan Winters, in his best days was out, gone, but the price he paid for it was deep. Listen to this. Sadly, it seems that the price Robin Williams has now paid is just as deep as that of his idol, Jonathan Winters. In fact, in the same U.S. Weekly interview, James Kaplan says this, with a gift of, for mimicry and improvisation that verged on demonic possession, Williams could even approach the artistry of his idol, Jonathan Winters, a man whose genius took him once or twice over the edge of the mental illness. Williams' own version of hell has been extensively chronicled. Do you understand what they're admitting to? They're telling you this. You say, I don't need to know this. Yes, you do. You do need to know this. Why? So you can tell others about this. So you can, again, have an intelligent faith that you can explain to people why you don't watch the things. You know what? Too many fundamentalist parents destroyed their children by just saying, you can't watch this, but never taught them anything. So as soon as they got a chance, they rebelled against God. They went out and they did what they wanted to do. And then they got themselves deeper than they could get out. Why? Because you don't explain anything. You don't teach anything. You don't study anything. You don't show them why. Jonathan Winters, that was uh, Robin Williams' hero, he said, these voices are always screaming to get out. Winters told the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, further admitting, they follow me around pretty much all day and night. Do you understand? He, he's admitting that he's possessed and, the, and, and it just doesn't stop. He's admitting it. He's telling people this in an interview, and, and, and it doesn't shock anybody. 
And that is this man, that was Robin Williams' idol right there. It's sorcery. It's all it is is sorcery. Williams once likened his act to the daily jogs he took across the Golden Gate Bridge. There were times he would look over the edge, one side of him pulling back in fear, the other insisting he could fly. What is that? It's possession. See, it's real, but your preacher won't tell you that on Sunday morning. He won't tell you that devil possession is real. He won't talk about devil possession. Let's not talk about any of that stuff. The Bible's full of it. Cover to cover, everywhere, talks about it. But you don't know about a spiritual warfare. And then I've had people tell me, I, oh, you ought to back off on that spiritual warfare stuff. Well, I ain't backing down. Because it is a war. And it's time, like the song says, to sound the battle cry. Because it's getting deep. And hey, listen, there's plenty, there's plenty of places that you can go. Plenty of churches where they're not fighting anything. And guess what? The devil ain't fighting them either. And you can have peace. And you don't have to change anything in your life. And you can watch all the wicked things you want to. And you can revel in this wicked world. And you can put your tithe in. And you can continue to do all those things. And they won't warn you about a thing. And they'll watch you slip straight into hell. You can go there. They're there. They're everywhere. And you won't be bothered. You can come on Sunday morning and you can hear a bunch of songs and they'll maybe do a little dance for you and somebody will do a sermonette for you for 25 minutes and then you can go your way and live the old rotten life you did and you'll fall into hell one day. Or if you're saved, you're going to go into you're, you're going to you're going to be chastened by the Lord severely. And you'll wonder why your life's a failure, why you lost your kids, why everything fell apart. Because you don't want to fight, that's why. Oh, you're you talk about that fighting too much. Really? As much as the devil does? Because we are in all points attacked. In every way. You know, interesting enough, these court jesters or these jesters... They're really like the occult in a lot of ways. I mean, they, they are very occultic. Obviously, they are occultic. I mean, he was devil-possessed. But they follow what, what is commonly known as the fool in a tarot card. It says, a card of the major arcane of the tarot depiction of the fool includes a man, listen to this, or less often a woman juggling unconcernedly or otherwise distracted with a dog, sometimes a cat at his heels. The fool is in the act of unknowingly walking off the edges of a cliff. What did he just say? He said he always felt like he was on the edge where he could either fly or he could fall off the cliff. Same thing. See, a lot of these comedians, a lot of the reasons they do what they do is because they're possessed. That's how they can do all those imitations and a lot of the things they do. I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of them are. Most of them are. And you know what? If you're going to get to a certain level in Hollywood, you have to be possessed. You don't get there without it. Nope. Nope. The last, laugh, the last laugh is reserved for death. Also, death humbles everyone just as jesters make fun of everyone regardless of standing. Anyway, that's, that's the occultic stuff that they follow. But this man, he lived on the edge of insanity, knowing full well of demons. He did an entire comedy skit mocking the virgin birth, the name of Christ, the whole gospel story, including the resurrection. I watched, it, I watched a minute and a half clip yesterday what he was doing. Somebody sent it to me and said, look, now, now, <laughs> now there are some pastors out there, there are some pastors out there that will tell you that, well, you know, he said the one, two, three, repeat after me. So he was saved and, you know, it's, it's just business as usual, you know. I mean, no big deal. Sad. Listen, folks, the truth of the matter is, and it's hard for people to handle the truth, but the truth of the matter is that man mocked God, and he mocked sin, and he got people to laugh at sin, and he made sin funny. And God hates sin. God doesn't exist so you can go to heaven, okay? I'm sorry if you believe that the, the, the universe revolved around you, and God exists to please you, but it don't work that way, friend. 
God is holy and righteous, and he will not be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that so shall he also reap. Don't ask me to back down because, because you don't want the truth. You want somebody to accept a Jesus that's not the one of the Scriptures, one that is a sin-loving Jesus that's going to be okay with you laughing and mocking him. No, it don't work that way, friend. That's not the God of the Bible. God doesn't exist to make you happy. This man was Satan's tool to make people laugh at things God hated. Things that God called an abomination. He made men laugh at. Consider the movies that he did. Peter Pan, or called Hook, modeled after the false perverted god Pan, full of magic and sorcery. I know, because I watched it. I've seen it. He also did a movie called Jumanji, when two kids find and play a magical board game. They release a man trapped for decades in it and host of dangers that can only be stopped by finishing the game. What do they teach him there? Think about it, you'll figure it out. He also did a movie, a cross-dressing movie called Mrs. Doubtfire, and you laughed at cross-dressers. See? How about that? You turned on a movie where somebody was cross-dressing, and it made you laugh, and you sat and watched the whole movie while somebody's cross-dressing, which is an abomination under the Lord, and they're making it, they're doing it right in front of your face. Same thing as what's going on here, the transgender and the transvestites or whatever else you want to call it. It's all an abomination to God, and we actually paid for it and watched it. Now, if that ain't a seducing spirit, I don't know what is unless you really do like that sort of thing. Amen! Unless you do like that sort of thing, then i got to tell you that you were seduced and deceived. He also did a movie about a demonic genie in a lamp with powers called Aladdin. I watched that one too. Mm -hmm. Where that guy gives homosexual innuendos the whole time to the movie Robin Williams did. The whole time to the movie. The whole time. But back off, preacher. It's no big deal. He's just selling magic. He's just selling cross-dressing. He just did movies about Sodom, being a sodomite. Come on, he's just selling. I mean, it's no big deal. Back off. Let him go. Hey, rest in peace. He ain't resting in peace. He's burning in an everlasting fire. And I don't get any joy out of telling you that, but it's the truth. All based on comedy and all designed to make you laugh at what? At sin and witchcraft. I submit to you that it's nothing but sorcery, and that's all that it is, is sorcery. He was devil-possessed, and he used sorcery and magic, and it deceived and it seduced. That's exactly what it did. That's right. It's nothing but using demonic power to get you to laugh at what God hates. This man and many men like him before were jesters of Satan. Many of these comedians and actors have died the death of fools, mocking sin and mocking the God of the Bible. How's it worked out for any of them? Look at them. Look at the, look at the age that these actors and these rock stars and all these devils, look at the age that they die. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that so shall he also reap. Do you believe that? I do. How else do you explain Christian men and women laughing at things that God absolutely hates? Could you explain it some other way than that they were seduced and deceived and they were entertained by devils? Laughing in things in movies like witchcraft and cross-dressing. How does a pastor get up on Sunday and preach against sodomy and witchcraft and other things and then go home and let their kids watch Disney programs, take their kids to Disney movies, or take them to Disneyland? You tell me how you could preach against some of those things, against witchcraft and other things, but you participate in them by watching them and being entertained by devils. How? how? Unless you are deceived... Unless you've been seduced and deceived by sorcerers, how could it happen? They're sorcerers, folks. That's what they are. They are sorcerers. And for some reason, Christians out there today, Christians out there believe that they can somehow separate their entertainment from Jesus Christ. How about we try that in all things he might have the preeminence? 
How about that, huh? Do you not find it odd that we believe we can take entertainment and separate that from godliness and watch whatever we want and be seduced by spirits and involve ourselves with such things and then we stand around and wonder why we don't have the power of God today and America is being flushed down the toilet? Come on, don't ever kid yourself. We know exactly why it is. Because sin reigns, that's why. And they hateth him that rebuketh in the gate and tell him to stop doing it. They get mad at it. How is it that a preacher can read the words of God and they go to a Bible college, talk about filling in for someone on the pulpit the next Sunday, and then post an Aladdin or a Magic Disney movie and smile and chuckle at it, like I've seen this week on Facebook. A guy that I just deleted off my Facebook because I can't believe it. He's, been, he's in the ministry, uh, he, he's going to college, and, he's, and he's, he's filling in for some church, and he's preaching there, and all the time he's advertising movies like Marvel Comics and movies like all these other... Now, first of all, if you were watching those on your own, that's bad enough, okay? But why in the world would you put that on your Facebook page and show everybody that you minister to and everybody, one of your friends, what you're into. Now, if I heard that guy preach and he came to my church and I heard him preach and I looked on his Facebook page and saw that, I'd laugh him right out of that place. But you've got to be kidding me. Are you serious? you got to be kidding me. You're watching Marvel Con. Why don't you grow up? Why don't you be a man? Why don't you put away childish things? Why don't you stop being entertained by devils? You're either going to preach God's word, you're going to stand for it, you're going to be a hypocrite. Which one is it? But see, someone won't tell that young man that they're paying that they're, they're paying him ten, they're paying that school ten thousand dollars. That young man is paying them ten thousand dollars a year, probably or something, to educate him in the ministry. And uh, apparently, holiness, righteousness, and separation is not part of it. Well, you got ripped off. Because you can come here for free, I wouldn't charge you a thing, and we'd give you all of it by the grace of God. Sad. I'll submit to you how a man can do that because he's deceived. Because TV is sorcery. Those programs are nothing but sorcery. It's all sorcery. I can only say that Hollywood must be led by seducing spirits, and they're there to seduce the saved people. Only a man that is seduced by spirits would uplift the life of a devil-possessed man who made people laugh at sin. How could any Christian, unless he was seduced and deceived, lift up a man that was, that, that, was, that was possessed by spirits that advertised for the devil, that got you to laugh at witchcraft and fornication and sodomy and everything else? How could you unless what? Unless you were seduced. You see any other way? Don't you realize... Those people aren't worth you wasting your money on. They hate you. They loathe you and they look at you like you are worthless little trash. And they are programming you and they are playing game, mind games with you and they are, they, are, they are turning your brain into garbage, wasting your life with their foolish, wicked entertainment. That's what they're doing. American Christians can't stand before their enemies. You know why you don't want to go fight a spiritual battle? You know why you won't stand up some Jezebel down in the corner? Because you're too busy watching her on television. That's why. Amen! Boy, that's good preaching. I might say that again. You know why you're not? You know why you're not down there fighting that Jezebel in the corner? Because you're too busy watching her on TV! That's why. And you can't stand before your enemies. Back off, preacher. It's too much. No, my friends, it's not enough. It's not enough. You know how many Christians are completely angry when you say things like that? When you point out that, that, man, that men sought out familiar spirits and that man promoted everything God hated? 
that that man taught you to laugh at sin, that that man admittedly had taken on a loan, taken talent on loan from hell to do what he did. You realize that? His talent came from hell. His talent came from devils. That's where he got it from. That's who he sold himself from, sold himself to. I've had people, and they still, I mean, <laughs> I, I tell you, you know, I, I post that Hollywood satanic roots almost every week on there to a thousand people and all their friends. I post it every week on there because I want people to, I want people to watch it. I, we send it out for free to people. We'll send the whole series out for free to people. Just the whole thing, free. We don't care. We don't, I, we don't ask for any money. We don't ask for any postage. Somebody asked me, what are you gonna, how are you going to be able to afford the postage? Well, God can afford anything. So I, we just send it out. We just send them out. Here, you can have them free. 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 Give them out. Somebody asked me, hey, can you give me 10 copies of that? You got it. I'll send them to you. I really do care that you're being entertained by devils. God help us that we've been seduced by spirits into laughing at what God hates. I want you to think about that for a minute. Do you realize that? that you, The Bible, Romans chapter 1, talks about reveling in sin. So a bunch of silly sodomites come running out there and doing things on television, on movies, and everything else, and all these things are going on, this magic and this witchcraft, and you're sitting back in your chair flipping through a remote and laughing about it. And what do you think the God of heaven is doing? looking down on his children and saying, how in the world? I'm going to have to deal with them. Why would, I, why would my power be anywhere near them? Why would my power be any... Why would, why, why, why would there be any sweet revival? <laughs> why would I breathe on them? Why would I give them my presence and power? Why would I? They don't want it. They're being entertained by devils. They're supporting the other side. They're paying for that. They're paying to be entertained by devils. They're giving their money there. I always laugh at people when they get fussy about giving and money and everything. I wonder where their money's going. I know one thing, it's never a problem for me to spend money on myself. We can always find a way to get it, can't we? If we want something. Boy, when it comes to the Lord. <laughs> i got to be a penny pincher now. i got to be a legalist. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. Oh, that'll help you. By the way, I'm not complaining about anything. I'm just, I, that's just a blanket statement. I have nothing to complain about. Believe me, nothing at all. God has taken care of me. And continues to. And his ministry. Amen. And he uses you to do it and others. And we praise God for that. I'm just just a just a statement of wonder how much we've wasted on entertainment in our lives compared to what we give to God. How easy it is for us to give to entertainment and to devils. But to give to God will turn into a legalist. Well, I can only do about that much. Right? But we're all into it, baby, when it's something for entertainment for us. We're all into it, man. We'll give it all. If it makes our flesh happy, we'll do it. Think about it. How can we have revival and how can we see the hand of God in our churches with great power if we don't turn our back on these wicked people and their Hollywood wicked mind control games that they play? Their wicked teachings from seducing spirits. But all I can say is it must be sorcery. I've had Christians say, well, you've got to be sensitive. Don't be a Pharisee. I had some guy come on there. I had some guy come on there on my Facebook thread the other day. And um, I was posting about, I was posting the quote from Robin Williams stating that he was possessed. Oh, well, how do you know? How do you know that he didn't get saved the last minute of his life? Well, the last minute of the life he was hanging from a rope, so I don't think he got saved. A belt, sorry. Somehow I don't think that prayer seen. I don't think it. And by the way, I'm going to show you where that happened in the Bible too. Okay? Lest you think, oh, pastor, don't talk about that stuff. Why? He did. 
I'm trying to figure out this book that you that a lot of these people are preaching today that that leaves all of the important stuff out and just kind of just gives you heaven and that's it and doesn't tell you the rest of the story. Why? So you feel good about heaven when you deserve to go to hell? <laughs> oh, we're in trouble. I'm telling you, when I say we're in trouble, I really mean it. We are in trouble, and we don't even realize it. That's because we're because of seducing spirits. That's why we don't even realize how much trouble we're in. Somebody asked, well, "Why? Why do you? How do you know that he didn't get saved right before he died?" You know what I asked him? I said, "What fairy tale are you watching? I mean, where do you people get this stuff from? Like, where do you where do you find this at?" Turn to, Ma turn to Matthew chapter 27. I want to show you somebody who did what Robin Williams did. <clears throat> Poor people online. They're probably going to hear me drinking that water. My throat's getting dry, though, so. Oh, well. <laughs> Matthew chapter 27. Now, I think you'll remember that... I think you'll remember that... Uh, um, Dave, uh, that Judas, the Bible says that Satan entered into him. Do you remember that? Okay, I've taught you that a long time ago, and the Bible says that, obviously. Matthew chapter 27, verse number 3, Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, himself. Didn't say he repented to God. He didn't run out to Jesus Christ and repent, did he? What did he do? He repented unto himself. What is that? There's a Bible verse that covers that. What is that? The sorrow of this world worketh death. See, Judas had a repentance, but it wasn't repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. His repentance was the sorrow of this world, and it leads to death. That's where it goes. He said here, he said, he repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Whew. What a haunting statement. You know, I heard a sermon, and you ought to go listen to it. I'm plugging somebody else's sermon here. But uh, Ian Paisley preached a sermon on Judas versus Peter. And you ought to listen to that sermon. It's called, like, Judas the Black Pope and a few other things on there. He's just, I mean... <laughs> It goes into yeah, yeah, it goes into some deep stuff. But anyway, it was a great sermon. He talked about Judas and he and he screamed out when he does it. And only Ian Paisley, you know he's in one of those big, huge stone old church buildings, and he's just screaming out, uh, I have betrayed the innocent and his voice just sends a shrill through you, man. It's a great sermon that you gotta hear it. Um anyway, um it says here, he said, I betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. Now that's a Pharisee. Not a man that takes the gospel to you and tells you you need to repent and believe on Jesus Christ. That's not a Pharisee. That's a Pharisee right there. We don't care about that innocent blood. We could care less. That's a Pharisee. Not somebody that goes out there and preaches against sin and preaches Jesus Christ. That's not a Pharisee. That's one right there. We need to understand what a Pharisee really is. Matthew 27, verse number 4, verse number 5, excuse me, and he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. You see, that's how he died. When the devil is done using you, just like Judas, he was done using Judas. What did he do? He went out and hung himself. Those devils were done using Robin Williams. As soon as they were done with him, what did he do? He sorrowed. He knew what he had become. He knew what he was. And he had betrayed the innocent blood. I wonder if mocking Jesus went through his mind. I know it is now. No jokes in hell. No laughing in hell. No games in hell. No improv in hell. Only tormented by devils and tormented for an eternity. Eventually in the lake of fire, but no joy, no laughing, no mocking at sin. No, I imagine he is a believer more than anybody now. I imagine he believes a lot.
You see, that's how he died, though. You see, it's a seducing spirit. I cannot imagine Christians telling me that this man got saved before he killed himself. <laughs> it's not practical. It's not biblical. The man was seduced by spirits and practiced sorcery and sought out familiar spirits to help him, like his idol did. He was like Simon, bewitched the people with the power of sorcery. You know, the devil uses comedy to give you a break from reality. In this case, Hollywood was used to get a laugh and get you to laugh at sin. Why is this so complex for people? Isn't that statement so simple? Can you not see the sin in those things? Can you not see that you were laughing at wickedness? Is that really that hard to understand? It seems like a very... How could anybody argue with that? How could any born-again Christian with the Spirit of God inside of them, how could they argue with that? Well, that's just your opinion. Really? So sin is my opinion now? So watching devils is my opinion now? So you watching people curse your Lord and Savior out is my opinion now? No, I'm going to tell you something. You're just rebellious and you want to live your own life. That's what it is. And you don't want to answer to God. And you don't want to answer the truth and you don't want to make some decisions. Like this is right and this is wrong. You want to play the line. You want to play in the devil's playground, the gray area. Let me ask you a few questions here. How can you laugh at cross-dressers but preach against them when they, use, when they want to use your bathroom in the schools? How many preachers would preach against it? You can't let them do that. You can't let cross-dressers go in there, kids dressed up like that, go into a boy's bathroom or a girl's bathroom. Yeah, but you watched them and you laughed at them on a movie. All I can say is you've been seduced. There's no other, I, I know no other answer for that, how somebody could watch it there, but when it walks in front of your face, you're mad at it. I don't, I don't understand that. That's right. You laughed and watched women half naked but preach against it when your daughter rebelled and wore the same clothes. But you let her, you watch those movies with your children. They saw all that wickedness. You watch them, and then when they go off and they dress like that, you're, you're all of a sudden mad about it now? You weren't mad. You were laughing at it before. Sorcery. Sorcery. Deceiving spirits. That's what it is. You laughed and watched movies with wicked rock music, then started preaching against it when your children rebelled against you. And started listening to it. Then you started preaching against it, but your words held nothing. Why? Because they watched you laugh at it. And it's sorcery. It's just sorcery. It's deceiving. You laughed and watched movies that had cursing and foul language, but then preached against it when your kids started talking like that but you let them watch it. Seducing spirits, sorcery. So this man's life, he sold false gods, fornication, sodomy, transvestite, transgender, sorcery, magic, witchcraft, all the way through all the power of seducing spirits. And people fell for it. And now they want to, and now Christians want to say, oh, well, well, you know, rest in peace and we'll see you, you know, you'll be in heaven and, and you're making God smile and, 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 and everything like that. What Bible are you reading? You know, we've lost the ability just to tell the truth to people because we're afraid of their reaction. We just lost the ability to do that. I'm afraid how they're going to react. I'm afraid what God thinks of me if I don't. Why can we so easily offend God but not our, not our brother or not our family? Why are we okay with offending God and not offending our brother in that sense by telling them the truth? Whose side are we on anyway? You might say, oh, it's just entertainment, preacher. Did you know that eight times in the King James Bible we find the phrase, be sober? Eight times. Eight times we see that. Do you know why we see it eight times, that be sober? Do you know what that stands for? 
Well, let me give you uh, let me give you some examples of what the what eight stands for in the King James Bible. Eight in the Scripture stand for new beginnings. The first day of the week is mentioned eight times in Scripture. Then in Genesis chapter eight, we see the we see that eight people have a whole new world. No time to continue. But listen to me. God said this. He said, "Be sober eight times. Be serious." When you get saved, it's time to be serious with life. That doesn't mean you can't have some fun or whatever, or joke or whatever, or do some jesting, but the Bible taught, warns about jesting, which are not convenient at times that it is not, and taking things too far. But you know what? God doesn't want you to spend your life being entertained. He wants you to spend your life serving Him and being faithful to Him, not being entertained. And He certainly doesn't want you spending your life in sin, watching sinful entertainment. Or entertaining yourself with wicked things. God doesn't need worldly comedy to make you make you happy or to make you blessed or make you joyful. These seducing spirits have a desire to entertain you right out of reality, and it's worked. If they can entertain you right out of reality, that's what they do. Don't you understand? That's why most people don't have any clue what's going on. Hey, go down to the, you know, me and him go to my dad. We lift weights at Anytime Fitness. You go down there to that. You go down there to that place and you and, and and you lift weights and you watch it. If dad turns that station on a news program, those people lose their mind because they are so carried away and know nothing about what's going on in this world that they're too busy watching football, baseball, basketball, all these other things. They don't have a clue what's going on. They don't have a clue what's going on in this world. They don't know what's happening in their own country. They don't know the rights are being stolen away from them. They don't realize that all the things that are happening right now, they have no clue. None. Why? Because they're entertained. Bread and circuses. That's where they're at, bread and circuses. By the way, I've had some people wonder, well, why can you talk about this death and everything and, and use this? Well, I will use anything to preach the gospel like that and to tell the truth and to reveal the wicked works of darkness and to reprove them. God did, didn't he? Look what he did with Jezebel's death in 2 Kings 9.36. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elisha the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. Seems to me he used her death. I don't hear any flattering speech in there either, do you? I don't hear any. That's right, I was going to say that too, and I didn't put it down, but I was thinking that too. Acts chapter 5 with those guys. Um, Acts chapter 12, verse number 20, And upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god and not a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not glory. Gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Did God use his death? Yeah, he did. To bring great fear. People feared the word of the Lord. They ought to see a man's wicked life like that, and him taken by the same devils that he was possessed with, and left for nothing, and show them what happens to you if you play around with the devil. And also to show you we ought not support those people. So I'm, yeah, I'm going to use that as an opportunity. I absolutely I am. Ezekiel 33.11 says this, Saying to them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? I have no pleasure in the death of that man either. But you know what? I'm sure not going to overlook the fact that he was devil-possessed, that he taught people to laugh at what God hates, and he seduced many people along the way. And maybe there's some comedians and some people out there right now that want to follow his ways. I guarantee you there are. And there are millions of people that want to follow his ways and become rich and wealthy, and they're going to idolize him. Hey, do you think the fact that he idolized Jonathan Winters is how he got devils to come into him? So, 
You think if there was a preacher that told that looked him in his eye and said, "You better not follow them wicked devils." That man is devil possessed. That man admits that he's devil possessed. If you follow that man, you're going to be possessed too, and you're going to and you're going to die and go to hell one day. No, that's not very nice. No, that's true. And it needs to be said. And we need to warn the wicked and warn the righteous. That's what the Bible says. These people are seduced. It's nothing more, and there's Christians that are seduced. They are seduced by worldly, by spirits. They are seduced by sorcery, and they've given in, and they've fallen into it, and they've allowed themselves to be seduced by it. And I'm telling you right now, you better wake up. If you're listening and you're watching that garbage of Hollywood, you better wake up and realize that you are betraying your God. If you are saved and a child of God, you need to wake up and snap out of it and realize that those people are nothing more than devil-possessed people. They have a different set of standards. They hate your God. They hate what he stands for. They hate this book. They hate everything about him. And they war against him. And they have millions and millions and millions of people that help them. And they have billions and billions of dollars to do it. And you better wake up and understand that the end thereof is death. Look how that man ended his life. So let me ask you a question. Would you really want to support those people? Would you really want to support the Disney Corporation? Would you really want to support all of those things? Think about it. By the way, I've had somebody ask me a question, so I'm going to clear something up here right away. There are people out there that get depressed, okay? There are people out there, Christians out there that can get depressed, okay? It's a real thing. There's really, the people do get depressed sometimes. And they need to encourage themselves in the Lord. They need to make sure their diet's proper and a few other things to make sure they're walking in the Spirit and they're leaning on the Lord Jesus Christ and they're talking to people and they're around other Christians that are strengthening them in the faith. It does happen. The difference in a man having suicidal thoughts or thoughts of death like that as a Christian is different. It is different than a man that is seduced by spirits, that is possessed by devils, and that is, that, that is a channel for demons, and that is practicing witchcraft. Saul died because he practiced witchcraft, and he consulted familiar spirits, and he did end up falling on a sword. Yeah? There's a few different accounts of that story in the Scriptures. I don't know what Saul was. I haven't been able to decide yet where Saul is. I don't get it. I've had some conflicting, uh, some people tell it on both sides. I'm not concerned with Saul. What I am concerned about is born-again believers that I know have the Holy Ghost of God and that sometimes they go through depressions and have suicidal thoughts. That doesn't mean you're devil-possessed. All right, the devil can pick on anybody's flesh, and demons can pick on it. Devils can pick on anybody's flesh and deal with them, and they can have thoughts of negativity and thoughts of other things. And these things can happen. It's important that you're around people that are encouraging you in the scriptures. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. And that's what a church is for. That's what the body of Christ is for. That you come together, and, and you know what? You ought not be ashamed if you need to talk to somebody. You've got nothing to hide. There's a difference in that and what Robin Williams did. People say, well, he was depressed. He had demons. He had devils in him. He sought out devils. And he was possessed by them and admitted that he gained his fortune, his fame, and his talents from devils. Do you understand the difference? There's a difference in being oppressed and being possessed and working with demons. Okay? There's a difference in those two. So understand that. Robin Williams is not just some poor suicidal man that, that uh, just had some bad thoughts and everything else. No, he was a man that played with the devil and he finally got burned. And I get no joy out of that, but that's the truth. He played with the devil and he got burned. And that's what happens when you play with the devil. When he's done with you, you will die. And you will go to hell. Just like every rock star that has made a pact with the devil, every actor... On and on. It is a death culture. And all they that hate me, says God, love death. Father, thank you, Lord. Help us with your truth. Lord, we're not, we're, our eyes are open to it. Help us to open others' eyes up to it. 
Lord, only Holy Spirit, you can do your work. We can just provide. We can just give a message to somebody. We can just give them information. We can just point them in the right direction. But dear God, you have to work on their hearts. And I pray you'd help folks to abstain from all appearance of evil, stay away from this wicked Hollywood and all of its garbage and its pumping through and its seducing spirits and its sorcery. And Lord, I pray if one person hears this and they'll turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll repent of their sins and they'll be born again if they're lost, Lord, that Jesus is the only answer. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. Jesus Christ died for sinners. Jesus Christ came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Dear God, please help those turn to Jesus. You promised that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You are Lord. Help us, Lord, to always remember that. Help us, Lord, to always honor that. And Lord, if there be lost, help them to hear that. Come to the knowledge of the truth and be freed from these devils. Only Jesus can free from devils. Lord, you came to set the captives free. You freed the, the, the maniac of Gadara from the legion that was haunting him. And Lord, you can free any man from devils. And I pray, Lord God, if there be anyone that has that, that Lord, you'd release them from that, that they would come to you and have that desire, that you'd forgive their sins and cleanse them of their unrighteousness that only your shed blood can do. Lord, I pray all these things in the power of the Holy Ghost and in Jesus' name. Amen.